election of President Mohamed Buhari's aide, Loretta Onoche, as a commissioner of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Nigerians say she is partisan, but the Senate is set to scream hard. INEC creates 56,000 additional polling units ahead of the 2023 general election. We'll be talking about this and how best Nigeria can get ready for the crucial vote in two years. We'll also review today's papers and tell you about two events that took place on this day in history. Don't forget our top trending stories which come off immediately. Welcome to The Breakfast Show on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonia. And I am Annette Felix. Good morning to you and good morning, Justin. Good morning, Annette. Good looking good in black. <laughs> Thank you. Looking great in blue. Yeah. Wow. So, yes, it's been an interesting couple of days. You know, the, the week is wrapping up very, very slowly. Mm. It's the 17th of June today, a Thursday. And um, just taking a look at what's been happening in Nigeria and the fact that somebody, former presidential candidate Adamu Gaba, is in the news about two times this week for something not so great. At least that means for breaking some sort of policy for an you know, international social media platform, something like that. Mm. We saw Adamu, um, Adamu Gaba's Croe app you know, get deleted or removed from... Apple Store or okay, Play Apple, Store, yeah. yes, the Play Store, mm. and that's because you know they say that his app simply violates lots of terms and conditions, lots of policy, you know, of Google. And now the the, the breaking news is <laughs> Instagram. Yes, <laughs> tell me about it. It is really, really interesting the way all of this is just unfolding in quick succession. First of all, it was there ban or suspension of Twitter and how he was quick to start off his own, you know, alternative, which is a uh, crowy. You know, Nigerians, you know, said that we're going to report uh, him all over social media platforms saying that uh, he is uh, not supposed to be there on Instagram. So I wasn't really surprised that when uh, this happened uh, on Instagram, I guess, well, not like I'm trying to be a messenger of doom or something, but uh, some people would say that he had it coming. Mm -hmm. So basically, he, he has spoken about this, mm -hmm. reacting to why Instagram deleted his social media accounts. And this was what he said. You know, he's also a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress. Yes, he, is. he went onto his Facebook page. Hopefully that doesn't get deleted. And he went onto his Facebook page to say, um, they've taken down my Instagram too. This could happen to anyone for voicing out contrary opinions. Mm -hmm. uh, this is more reason why we should work excellently on Crowe. So um, he is now saying that he has contrary opinions and that's why. So we really haven't gotten a statement from Instagram to no, verify. We're that, yeah. Yes, exactly. To verify why Adamo Garba's was account indeed, was uh, taken down. But he's saying that because he has contrary opinions. But we should also understand that Twitter or social media is a place where people of diverse opinion is welcomed. Only when you begin to bridge certain rules, mm -hmm. you know, when you go on Instagram or any other social media platform and there's something you need to report, they give you a drop down of options. Yes. Does this post contain hate speech? Does it contain harassment? Does it contain, you know, sexual you know, content? That Bullying. To exactly. People. So when, when lots of people have reported a particular account mm. and they, they pick one of these options, maybe hate speech, harassment, bullying, things like that. And these social media platforms continually get, you know, reports of that. They would look into it and take of action. Course, because they just don't, you know, act on just claims. They check or they do their own investigation. And when they are, these investigations or those claims are confirmed, uh, they have to do what they're needful as it is. Yes, it's not to say that Instagram, Twitter is perfect all the time. Lots of people get, you know, their accounts blocked or deleted mm. unjustly. Maybe mm. just political enemies, things like that. You have... You have things like that, yes, yes where your account gets blocked, you know, you get locked out, things like that. So you have to, you know, send a message, send an email to those accounts, to mm. those social media platforms, and, you know, begin the case to say, of this course. is why I think my account should be restored. Mm. You know, but in a case where we know the person of Adamu Gaba, how vocal he's been on certain issues and what his stance has been. I agree. You know, agree. we can't really be surprised when Instagram takes actions like this, mm. you know. So yes, that's, that's basically that for, for this particular issue. And he's been talking about going back to developing Kuwait. I think that really is another big issue. Uh, 
the guy is just not seeing any stopping him other for the fact that uh, he, Instagram, you know, has taken him down. He, I'm, I'm thinking uh, in his mind, it's just a temporary setback and that he should just do something, you know, just to keep her head, just anyhow. Exactly. And just in case um, you didn't catch that conversation, we talked about it a few uh, days ago on The Breakfast when uh, Google Play Store took down Chloe. So when the Twitter ban, you know, you know, became the buzz in Nigeria, he said that he's released his own social media platform called Chloe. So fast. Yes, that was really quick. But then people began to say... If you're talking about, you know, that you're in support of the Twitter ban by the presidency, and then a few, you know, moments later, you're, you're releasing a new app called Query, then it then seemed like you had personal, you know, personal reasons. He just had an reasons. axe to grind. He just uh, wanted to benefit from that particular situation, and it just wasn't about... Uh, uh, stopping Nigerians from speaking or any other thing. Basically, he just wanted some sort of financial, you know, uh, will I say uh, compensation or just try to make money out of um, the system and of course that particular situation. Mm, indeed. Um, moving on now to our next big story. Mm. Well, we're talking about um, anti-corruption fights in Nigeria. So we know mm. that uh, Bawa is the new EFCC head and there's been lots of talks, you know, about, um, about him, how he's been, you know, working very hard, supposedly, how people have talked about how he's such a man of integrity. But Remember that we've had analysts on the show, especially Mr. Ademola Kimbola um, okay. yesterday on, on Off the Press, who said he feels that the person of Bawa has been speaking too much to the press and that he needs to get into action. And one of the things he said was that Bawa made claims that the EFCC um, investigated a female commissioner mm. who laundered 18.75 billion naira. Mm. He went on to say that this... Um, particular minister had bought a property um, worth um, $37.5 million. Now, this, this is equivalent to the 18.75 million yes. naira I mentioned. Yes. Um, she bought it from a property and paid, um, deposited $20 million in cash. Is you this know, in Nigeria where we're grappling with poverty, where we say we're the poverty capital of the world, where on my way to work this morning, I saw a man sleeping in a corner on the road suffering, where we have lots of people who are impoverished. Aneta, it is really alarming that when we're talking about um, cash light um, society, when we're trying to minimize uh, cash handling in Nigeria, we hear all sort of um, huge cash you know, yeah. being moved around there. No, it brings a question you know, uh, about uh, how uh, the, that would have just passed without uh, you know, many eyes or many people talking about it or may, many tongues wagging concerning that. The managing director, the bank's executive, they should be, uh, I mean, brought, you know, to come talk about how these monies, uh, you know, just pass through the system and that no one is doing anything about it. It is really, really, you know, mind-boggling when you hear these big amounts, you know, just circulating in the system. And of course, uh, every day we talk about corruption, we talk about corruption fighting back. But then again, some people are aware, the bank executives are those who are in charge of giving these approvals. They know these things happen and yet they just allow it just fly like that. Hmm, indeed. So really, I think that the Nigerian Anti-Graft Commission needs to do a lot more, mm. you know, beyond media trials like we're used to. That's you know, what how, we get to see every day. Exactly, how people are just paraded, how names might be dropped. We saw mm. that a lot during Magus' time, a whole lot you know, of naming these people. And at the end of the day, nothing is done to prosecute them. We just heard Most of that. them just walk scot free. Exactly. Even those who have cases in court, you know, are indicted of, uh, you know, corruption, they're still serving ministers in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So I feel that, you know, beyond naming these people or coming out to the media to say we're doing an investigation about this, I feel that you should, you know, cross your, eye, cross your T's and dot your I's. Because, yes. for example, you've mentioned that a female commissioner or a female minister in Nigeria, you know, is guilty of so-and-so. Rather than do your due diligence, do your investigation, and then, you know... Take this person to court instead of just uh, mentioning that uh, uh, this person committed this uh, sort of corruption. When, in actual fact, what you should be doing is uh, get your facts together, you know, uh, take your case to the court, and let us get to the end. Let us see some sort of prosecution. Let us see some people doing time for these crimes that they have committed.
That's exactly what it should be. That mm. is exactly what it should be. Because right now, the person is under pressure to begin to start cooking up excuses, possibly, you know, trying to cover cover all their tracks. But I feel that we can do much more. We can um, do much more. Going just beyond to, media just trials. Just beyond talking. You know, most of the times, it's just to show that uh, I'm still working, I'm still relevant. I just, let me show that uh, I have done something so mm. much attention will not be put on me, I guess. Interesting. So, yes, another top trending story. This is a bit of sports as well. We okay. know that Frenchman Paul Pogba mm. has uh, basically um, replicated a move that uh, Cristiano Ronaldo did on Monday. So, on Monday, Cristiano Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo um, was, you know, just sitting ahead of the match. And then he, there was a bottle of Coke in front of him. He took that bottle of Coke and put it under the table, right? Mm. And he took a bottle of water and waved it in the air. Now, this move by Cristiano Ronaldo really caught, you know, the, the, the market share of Coca-Cola, mm. you know, by the billions. You know, mm. what we saw was that there were lots of sell-offs in their shares. Okay. It just really wasn't great for the company. But Coca-Cola Coca put Coca out a statement yeah. saying everyone is entitled to their own preferences, you know. Of course. And we know about Cristiano Ronaldo, how he likes to keep fit, yeah. maintain, you know, a healthy weight healthy diet as he well. He maybe just wanted to drink water. And maybe he just wanted to drink water, <laughs> yes. And maybe, maybe, maybe also he just likes to avoid sugar, mm. you know. So well, that's exactly what Paul Papa did. You know, we know he's a devout Muslim, right? And yes, yes. how they don't take alcohol. alcohol so yeah. you, you saw that video there where he basically took the bottle um, of Heineken that was placed on his table and, put it and, just, the table. and just put it down. You know, he just, that's it. He We're takes the bottle. Just uh, Ronaldo stunt. You know, maybe he's like, this is temptation. I don't drink. Don't put that, don't put that in front of me. You know, so we're yet to see just how, you <laughs> Heineken know. Heineken is going to react. Yeah, how Heineken that. will react, how this would affect the Heineken brand. Because there are lots of Heineken lovers um, as much as we know. It is really, it is really uh, funny how, uh, you know, people tend to react just because of what they see uh, Famous people do, celebrities, sportsmen, uh, actors, and producers, and uh, uh, singers. You know, just because of one action, it is replicated and it has a ripple effect. Well, if it was just maybe some uh, other guy who just comes around and uh, picked up uh, some bottle of uh, maybe Coke or Heineken and mm -hmm. drops it over the table, I'm sure it would not really make you know you know so much impact. But then again, when it is a celebrity. There is so much, you know, that would uh, happen in the next couple of days, or even in hours, as you know. So it is really surprising. I wouldn't want to hold brief for um, Pogba there. Maybe he doesn't like alcohol, or maybe he feels uh, he looks better in the picture with Coca-Cola or something. <laughs> it could just be anything for you, know. See, you said lots of points that I really agree with, Justin. Okay. First of all, you mentioned earlier that what if Cristiano Ronaldo simply wanted water? You know, that, that's one point. And mm. the fact that celebrities, it seems they don't really have a right to be human anymore. Because mm. whatever they do is under media scrutiny. You True. just take it and you analyze it, just like we do right now. Because mm. they're celebrities, they're, they're persons of, mm. you know, so, of importance to a certain level, you know. So, for example, you see celebrities here in Nigeria, maybe stopping on the road to buy roasted corn, roasted whatever, roasted plantain, and then somebody takes a picture, puts it online to say, look at your celebrity, you think he has money. He is but human. He, exactly, they're just human. Uh, another another <laughs> case that comes to mind, uh, uh, Mofet Duncan uh, was in the news not too long ago okay. when he said something about um, buying plantains for about um, 6,000 naira and that uh, he was just called out on social media and he was called a liar. I think he reacted much later and said mm -hmm. uh, being famous is a curse. True. Because True. Uh, lots of things that you could just uh, go away scot free, you know. You can't get away with that when At you all. are a celebrity because everyone <laughs> is just trying to see your next move. Well said, Justin. Well said. So there's a there's a, a quote or a statement that um, P Square put out when they were still together. They said they miss buying you know sausages on the roadside. Mm. They miss buying this. They miss they miss just stopping in traffic and just buying a bottle of drink and just having been um, human. On most times, you, you know? might you might not even have all the left the luxury of time to. For instance, I am one person who uh, likes uh, binke. You know, so sometimes okay. I wouldn't want to go through you mean all you like the Akara. <laughs> okay, Akara as it is, you know, you know, before someone gets my head for this. You know, so I wouldn't, make, maybe I don't really have the time to go through the process of um, bringing out the beans, soaking it in water, washing, trying mm -hmm. to peel out the skin, then blending and... All the processes. It's a whole nine years and I don't have that time. So I'd gladly go to the lady by the roadside yes. who makes it very well and very appetizing. I'll just <laughs> buy my Akara and eat all. So, so, Justin, are you trying to tell me 
that when your face is plastered on all the billboards in Nigeria, you'll still do that? Aneta, <laughs> now Karabayo, I'm not kill person, no. So what's wrong oh in getting goodness. Akara? You know, oh I mean, these, these are not crimes for crying out loud. Indeed, you know, they are you're not. just trying to live a normal everyday, like be the, the boy next door or something. So no Indeed. one should hold you, you know, or come for your throat because you're trying to live a normal, you know, everyday life. Indeed, Justin. See, to be honest, right, this is why celebrities face a lot of backlash on social media. Someone and they get can just, Yes, someone can just go to your DMs and say, oh, you're so rich, you're so wealthy. Why would you be doing that? That's beneath you. Why would you be stopping on the roadside to buy try to keep cake? up with the Joneses. At the end of the day, most, most of them will want to go through all sorts of alternatives, you know, get loans just to try to, you know, impress, you know, with the labels, the brands and everything when they ordinarily may not be able to afford it at that particular time. But I think in the case of um, Pope Poba and mm. Cristiano Ronaldo, it, it was, in my opinion, about values, because mm. we know that for Poba, who is a Muslim, he doesn't take alcohol, yeah, right? It, yeah. So we should be able to understand that that's something he would not compromise on and, and respect that. But let's look at it. Uh, Another way. Okay. okay, there is water, there is Coca Cola, there is Heineken. If you don't want any, just let it be. Exactly. You don't have to take any. Exactly. You don't have to, you know, you know, just bring some particular brand down just because of your belief. You know, some people might want that at that particular time, but when you are sending another message, you might just tell them that uh, this brand is not really worth it at all. Indeed. So yes, that's it on Top Trending this morning. We'll take a break here and return with Off the Press. So stay with us.